been honoring this month uh, in a different ways. You know, uh, the show of Black History Month is American's history. Black culture is America's culture. And we're in America because of the centuries of struggles and achievements of black Americans. But we know this month falls after an especially hard year. The pandemic and economic crisis that is devastating black lives, businesses, and communities. There's a cry for justice 400 years in the making. And while we saw more Americans, more black Americans vote this past election than ever before, we we're just over a month away from the deadly insurrection against the very democracy by extremists and white supremacists. We remain in the battle for the soul of America on an ongoing journey to live up to our founding principles. That all people, all people are created equal and have a right to be treated equally. You all know for much too long we've allowed a narrow, cramped view of our promise to fester. It just festered and keeps festering. But to become a zero-sum game, it's what's happened. If you succeed, I fail. If I get ahead, you fall behind. If I hold you down, I lift myself up. But that's changing. It's going to change in our administration. We're bringing to our work a seriousness of purpose and urgency. We'll work to dismantle systemic racism across the board by advancing racial equity across the whole of government in health care, education, housing, economic mobility, environmental justice, civil rights, and our justice system itself. Protecting the sacred right to vote that remains under attack and beating this pandemic and economic crisis with equity at the heart of our response. You know, we do so not only because it's the right thing to do, which it is, but because it's the smart thing to do. It benefits everyone. The work ahead won't be easy, but I know we can do it by honoring those who came before us, by following those leading us today. <clears throat> this month, alongside our first black vice president, our first black secretary of defense, I walked down the hallway of the Pentagon that long honors the history of black Americans fighting for this country with honor, dignity, and devotion, congressional medal winners. We follow them today. We follow them today. I also visit, I also visited the Vaccine Research Center at the National Institute of Health at the so-called NIH, where brilliant scientists developed COVID-19 vaccines. I met Dr. Kizzy Corbett, who she's one of the most influential people in this process. She's a hero. She's saving millions of lives with a vaccine that is safe and that can save your life and the life of your loved ones when it's your turn to take it. We follow her today and honor her. You know, at the COVID-19 memorial, <clears throat> the day before the inauguration, I met Lori Key, a nurse from Detroit who sang a hymn she sings to lift up her fellow health care workers. Amazing grace. And we follow all of our amazing frontline workers today and praise them. And on Inauguration Day, we all listen to Amanda Gorman deliver a powerful, powerful words about America. Quote, a country that is bruised but whole, benevolent but bold, fierce and free. That's America. Ordinary people doing extraordinary things. And that's who we honor during Black History Month and each and every day by commemoration and also by action. St. Augustine Catholic Church traces its history here in Washington, D.C. to just before the Civil War, when a group of emancipated black Catholics came together to seek a spiritual home. Without a building, they worshiped in the basement of a segregated white church. And as war burned through the country, the parish built their sanctuary, laying the stones with their own hands and creating a place filled with the grace and dignity they had been denied. The church continued to grow, reaching out to those in our nation's capital who struggled with hunger and homelessness, helping to shape the vibrant culture of this city. Their story reminds us that it is often those who know the pain of injustice who fight the hardest for the future we need, whose faith must be unshakable, holding tight to the substance of things hoped for, 
the evidence of things not seen. What else could inspire so many generations to lift every voice and sing those immortal words? Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Since St. Augustine started its gospel choir more than 40 years ago, they've performed around the world from the Apollo Theater in Harlem to St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican. And like so many others who have been moved by their music, they have come to mean a great deal to me personally. Every Christmas, when Joe was vice president, we celebrated the season with the harmony of their carols at our home in Washington. And on the morning of the inauguration, we began our day worshiping with them as well. As we celebrate Black History Month, we are honored that this choir is our very first performance at the White House and so grateful to the National Endowment for the Arts for making it possible. We hope that you too will be inspired to sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of hope that the present has brought us. And now, the St. Augustine Catholic Church Gospel Choir.
Black History Month is a time to reflect and remember. It is also a time to recognize excellence, to celebrate incredible accomplishments, and to honor the contributions the African American community has made to our country. Contributions that have impacted the lives of every American in every community. Those contributions can be felt across every part of our society, including the music we listen to. For as long as I can remember, music has been an important part of my life. In fact, our children are named after jazz artists John Coltrane and Ella Fitzgerald. Through melodies and lyrics, music calls attention to important issues and injustices. It provides a lens to experience the world around us, to see things from a different perspective. And music serves as a source of comfort and solace to help us get through the most challenging times. Anthony Hamilton is a Grammy Award winning R&B singer who got his start singing in his church choir growing up in North Carolina. Tonight, he will share with us two songs that address issues that are front and center today. In Mercy, Anthony delivers a powerful song that shares his perspective on the struggles of being a black man in America today. And in Fine Again, he offers a hopeful message that things will be fine again. And now, Anthony Hamilton.
My name is Anthony Hamilton. And welcome to the White House Black History Month celebration. See, music has the power to heal and bring folk together who would normally sit and clap, laugh and dance together. See, music has a way to heal and let you know that everything will be fine again. We will 
Every year during Black History Month, we take time to remember and honor those who came before. The visionaries, the innovators, the barrier breakers, the history makers. Those who were clear-eyed about the moment in which they lived. Those who told the truth about what they saw. Those who worked to build a better future, a future unburdened by what had been. And I am grateful for them today and every day, and I know we all are, because they have left us a legacy and also a job to do. After all, history is a relay race with each generation passing the baton to the next. The baton is now in our hands, and what matters now is how well we run our portion of the race. That's what I've been thinking about this year as we endure this devastating pandemic. Because here's the truth about the moment we're in. More than two in three black Americans personally know someone who has been hospitalized or who has died from COVID-19. Black women workers are being forced out of the workforce in record numbers. So many black small businesses are being forced to close their doors. This pandemic has been an accelerator in many ways and our response to the pandemic has shown the determination and aspiration of the American people. Dr. Kizzy Corbett, a black scientist, helped develop the vaccine that is saving lives at this very moment. I met Dr. Corbett at the National Institutes of Health, also known as NIH, during our second week in office, just before I received my second shot. I was so honored to thank her on behalf of our nation. President Biden and I have been working hard to pass the American Rescue Plan so that every American can get vaccinated, so that every American small business can receive the support they need, so that every American woman worker can get back to work. Friends, the challenges we face are big, and because of that, so is our collective responsibility as we combat this pandemic and restore our economy. We all must do everything we can, whether that's wearing a mask or getting vaccinated or urging your members of Congress to pass the American Rescue Plan. I believe that if we are clear-eyed, if we are truth-tellers, if we are courageous, we can meet this moment. So this Black History Month, let us honor history and let us make it too. The baton is in our hands. Thank you. And may God bless you and your family and may God bless America.